The following Relay. interview was conducted with Tim McGinley, Chairman Emeritus of the Board of Trustees at Purdue University, for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Friday, May 28, 2010, Stuart B. 26, the TV studio. This is part two of an interview for the library's oral history program. The focus is retirement from the university's board of trustees. Uh, his major appointment was in 1989 by Governor Bi Evan Bayh. He served on the board from 1989 to 2009 and as chairman 1993 to 2009. Welcome. Thank now you. the major responsibility of the board is selection of the university president. You've been involved in the selection of two other people. But right. when you came on board, Dr. Baring was here, so you served under him to make a couple of comments or observations. He has said, although he has supported Purdue financially, his most extraordinary gift has been these two decades of service, which is very nice. Well, that's a, a yeah. nice compliment, and I yes. appreciate it. Uh, I think you're absolutely right that that is the most important job of trustees. I picked that up from trustees. some years and others that I've interviewed. Yeah, that, that's, uh, you have a lot of responsibilities, but if, I've always told people if you get that right, the president's selection right, uh, the rest is easy, and if you get it wrong, uh, it's awfully hard. So uh, we spent a lot of time and effort on it, and I was fortunate enough to serve under three presidents or with right. three presidents. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, Steve was here when I came to the board, and then uh, when he retired, I uh, was chairman of the board at yes, the time. Yes, I thought I'd move, Dr. Jeske, you uh, were the chairman of the and I, and I chaired the search committee as right. well for uh, that presidential search. and. And, uh, you know, uh, the search process uh, itself, I'll maybe make a couple of points on it. For uh, researchers, so they, that would be helpful. The, uh, the board did a lot of work prior to launching the search, and that work focused on, you know, where is the university uh, at that time, what are the strengths and weaknesses, and what should the priorities be going forward? What types of things do we need, and therefore what type of characteristics should the new president have to meet what we uh, determined were our needs. And just to give you a couple of examples of that, we wanted a, a, in our new president someone who had used strategic planning, uh, knew how to develop a plan and implement it, with implementation being very important, uh, because we thought that was the way the university should be shaped for the future. Mm -hmm. We wanted someone who had uh, proven experience and success in private fundraising uh, because we were ready to launch a major campaign and we wanted uh, someone who, was, who would welcome that and, and would be good at it and had uh, a background which demonstrated that. And, and then we uh, also wanted to uh, uh, really take Purdue to a new level of engagement with uh, uh, outside constituencies like the state, like the business community, like uh, the national interest. Yeah. And so uh, we wanted evidence that uh, the new president would be an external president, if you will, in many ways, uh, and would be comfortable and good at that. And so we spent a lot of time on criteria, and there were others, uh, so that we could then match uh, resumes as they came in. And uh, there, we had something like 125 uh, people that were either nominated or recommended or applied. It was pretty easy to cut that, say, in half or maybe down to 50. But beyond that, it was difficult. Then we really get into it, right. Because uh, they're very good and very competent. But if you had these criteria that you had developed and if you stayed loyal to those, then you could look at the candidates and say, yeah, they're great, but they're not great in what we need. Or they are great uh, in what uh, we need. And uh, obviously that, that process uh, uh, ended up with uh, some finalists, and Martin Jiske uh, always stood out uh, as a uh, prime candidate. And uh, so we uh, recruited him, and it, w it wasn't an easy sell at first, as I'm sure he'll tell you as well. He actually... Uh, sort of uh, said no several times, but we were persistent. And, um, and at the end of the day, uh, he and Patty agreed to come. Uh, so uh, that process uh, in all the learning, because Purdue had not done a, re a search in I mean, like I mean, 17 years. One question, I want to, excuse me to interrupt you. Did you do an, have an outside search firm help with this? We search? did. Oh, okay. We did. Uh, I'm thinking of a researcher might say, was it all internal or did you have any outside? No, we had a... We had a, uh, an outside uh, uh, consultant who was an expert in higher education and top-level hires 
in higher education. We also had a search committee, and that consisted of a variety of people, mostly uh, internal in that there were several faculty members, several trustees, deans, uh, uh, regional chancellor, uh, president of the Alumni Association, president of the student body, uh, folks like that uh, who um, worked very hard and were intensely involved in the process. But we were, we were uh, handicapped a little bit by the fact we hadn't done a search in 17 years. Right. Steve Bering served that long. And no one on the board or even on the search committee had had prior experience in doing this. So uh, I would point out that there were some people here and uh, former trustees who were extremely helpful at trying to educate us. Uh, I'd point out Stan Hem, who was the chairperson of the Senate at the time, and he had been involved in the prior search, and uh, he was very helpful, uh, as well as some former trustees that had been involved in the search. So uh, once we finished that, uh, and of course Martin served for seven years, right. and then there was a, another search launched, and at that point, we did have a lot of experience in that we had sure. done it before. We had kept records of what we had done, uh, so people were involved. It's maybe a little bit easier to at least get started. Uh, but a similar process, um, you know, tried to identify things we thought the university needed. Uh, give you an example of how that changes. Um, when we were in the second search, for example, research capacity and trying to uh, substantially increase our research funding uh, was high on our, on our list. Someone who could do that. Uh, someone who could in, in, enhance and improve uh, the quality of the student body. Uh, get better students here, retain them, uh, graduate them, uh, and help them out uh, with uh, scholarship money and other aid money was a, a criteria. Uh, in the Martin Jeske years, for example, we raised a, a billion seven in our capital drive, built a lot of buildings, including a lot of research buildings, hired a lot of faculty, uh, and, and now it was time to make all that work and produce, which meant research in dollars stage. in the next stage. Right. So as you can see, the criteria can change from right. time to time and uh, from need to need. And so uh, obviously France Cordova was uh, identified as one who met the criteria and could address those needs sure. and she came on board uh, uh, and uh, and then it, it, it actually when she, I, I agreed to kind of stay and help through the search but then it was time for me to sort of leave the board and so uh, uh, you know last July uh, I exited the board after 20 years on the board and yeah. 16 as chair so very nice do you find do you think when uh, they um, recruited Dr. Bering, were they using an outside search firm at that time as well? With, uh, with Dr. Dr. Bering? Bering? They right. did with Dr. Uh, Cordova. Oh. Uh, and you Bering, I wasn't here okay. at the time. Okay, I just time. wondered if perhaps I they I think had... they, they, uh, they used a little different process. I know they leaned heavily on the faculty and the faculty committee to generate names and candidates. Sure. Uh, and uh, I don't know whether they actually used an outside firm or not. Right. But we, we clearly did in the last two right. searches. Well, I was thinking sometimes researchers may say, it must be hard because you read in the media, I don't want anybody to know that I'm a candidate or I'm being considered, yeah. and it, it can be very, you, you've heard, of, I'm sure, of institutions where it got really dicey. You, you raise a great point. Uh, I insisted and the board insisted that uh, each of the last two searches be confidential. Right. And uh, that sometimes uh, irritates the press, uh, sometimes irritates, uh, uh, you know, the employees, faculty, staff, because they don't know what's going on and right. you don't feel like you can uh, tell them uh, uh, in complete candor uh, who the candidates are. But the reason for that is to get and attract the very best candidates. Yeah. Uh, and in our case, it, it proved to be true. Uh, Martin Jiske was a sitting president at another institution. Uh, if it were known that he were a candidate and was made public, uh, the, the other institution uh, would raise a lot of questions and their trustees would raise a lot of questions about what he's doing and so forth. And being aware that that's the process, if it's public, a lot of the good candidates, particularly if they're sitting presidents, just won't 
participate okay. in the process. Okay. And uh, that was our conclusion, and so we kept it confidential. And uh, I, I can tell you with total certainty that if it had not been confidential, we would have never hired Martin Jiske right. because he would never have uh, agreed to go uh, down right. the path with us. Isn't it also difficult for the candidate working with the institution that they're still at to try to handle the, in, if, as the process continues, if they know that they're being a candidate? It must sometimes could be hard on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it is because right. they're uh, obviously at a position uh, or a point in their career, right. wherever they are, that they're uh, considering an, another option. And, and uh, you know, and that's always difficult, to, yeah. not only professionally, but a, a lot of the candidates we'd talk to would have personal issues. Uh, kids, for example, that right. were in school and, you know, they didn't want to move the kids across country or uh, uh, other things, or a spouse who's employed and... Uh, uh, frequently anymore. Uh, uh, the spouse uh, is a professional as well, has their own career, and so you're, you almost are recruiting a team uh, right. as opposed to uh, just a little bit one individual. That's right. Yeah, and you've got to sell them uh, as well and, and perhaps also see if there's a, a spot for them in the university uh, so they can continue their careers. Right, good point. Dr. Jeske said the progress Purdue has enjoyed during the McGinley years marks this as a golden age for the university. That's very nice. And uh, Franz had said that he ushered in a new business model, which was guided by strategic planning. Do you think that having that strategic plan during the Jeske helped in the new one that was put in place? Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, we went through, uh, well, it, just to give you a, a flavor okay. for it, we, uh, when Martin came on board and we uh, had an agreement that we wanted a strategic plan, he took about a year in working with the board, and it was a very inclusive process where uh, several committees were established, uh, faculty were involved, students, administrators, alumni, uh, to try to surface uh, what should be the goals of the university and what should the priorities of those yeah. goals be. And it took us about a year uh, before all that came to a, a, a completion in, in the strategic plan, and it was adopted. And then from that, that period on, uh, almost every major decision had to meet the test that it fit the strategic plan. If sure. it did, we were uh, probably going to do it. If it didn't, it, it would not be done. And you always have to have priorities. You always uh, have to have trade-offs and with limited resources. So, um, uh, and then when uh, that plan really had achieved most of its goals, uh, at the time that uh, Martin was leaving the university, uh, we had had the million, billion seven fundraising campaign. We had built the buildings that we anticipated. We had increased the number of faculty. Uh, we would increased student aid. Research had doubled. All of these goals were achieved. And so uh, when France came in, we essentially duplicated the process, but with different results right. Right. because, uh, again, certain things had been achieved. and other things needed attention. That and will fit into it to some extent. Yeah, it, so it was a building on the, right. the old strategic Good plan. Point. It wasn't a brand new process with you know a whole different direction for the university. Uh, I, I would really view a strategic planning and Jiski was phase one and Good France point. is phase two and hopefully uh, you know uh, down the road there'll be a, a phase three uh, created by somebody. Right. Let's, that brings up the uh, next thing I wanted to talk about was leadership as a board chair. Your thoughts on a leader's role in the academic and professional world, leadership as the chairman sure. of the board. Yeah. Well, it, it's a, uh, a complex job and, and, uh, because it's a complex university sure. with a variety of constituents. Uh, and I do think you have to be a consensus builder. That That's one good, of the, yes. the, the roles of uh, the board chair is to... Uh, uh, try to involve everybody who has a stake in whatever the decision is, make sure that their opinions and views uh, get aired completely and thoroughly, uh, and then to try to work with the decision makers, whether that's the other trustees or the administration, uh, toward a decision that will uh, not only be a good decision, but will unite all of the people around that decision so that it moves forward with great energy and enthusiasm and momentum. And that latter part's extremely important. You can make the right decision, but if you don't have the people united behind the decision and willing to go to work for it, it's not going to happen. 
Exactly. Good point. And then that uh, some of the significant board activities, we talked a little bit earlier about the fundraising, but you came in when the Vision 21 was already in yeah. process, and that did extremely well. You make, would you make a comment on that? And I thought the campaign for Purdue, Purdue, particularly for the researchers, the original goal was what 1.3, and then we upped it. So I'm thinking of that if they read it, that yeah. it would benefit by your words. Excuse well, me. the uh, as I had mentioned, we had Vision yeah. 21, as you uh, uh, mentioned, was in process when I came aboard, and that concluded with about 330 million dollars, roughly. Yeah. Uh, and then there was a uh, hiatus while everything was getting implemented, and by the time the year 1999 came and the board was getting ready for another search, we were certain we needed another major capital drive. What surprised all of us, I think, was how effective uh, a dynamic president, uh, a strategic plan where you could point to exactly where the money was going to go and what the results would be, the impact that would, be, would have on the donor community. Um, I remember some early conversations with Martin uh, where a billion dollars was talked about and you looked like, well, we did 330 and now we're going to go triple that. Uh, some people thought, you know, that's just too much. Others uh, have voiced a similar thing, a billion, wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. And then, you know, we launched it and, and as uh, people were identified and, and asked uh, and recruited to the campaign, they, they, uh, they came with great enthusiasm. and. The pocketbooks op opened up and, you know, we raised it to a billion three and then next thing you know, we uh, finally uh, ended up with a billion uh, seven. Uh, but you have to have a, a clear case for donor support uh, on what you're doing and why. Uh, you, you have to have uh, uh, an, an audience, I uh, suppose, that, that's relatively new uh, because you can't keep going back to the same sources over and over again. But there were a lot of alums out there. And one of the other things I'd mentioned that wouldn't get headlines, but so important, is we put in place the infrastructure behind the fundraising campaign, you know, the, the data that you need, the um, people in each of the schools who are out asking, the records, the, you know, the uh, trailing of an alum's uh, career so that you kind of know where they might be in, in, in their stage and where they could be helpful to the university. And would they be interested and should they be contacted? Yeah, exactly. And, and when and you it, contact, really you got to know what the message is and how yeah. you can interact. Yeah, it's a science. Uh, yes, it is. You know, and, and hopefully one of the legacies of all that is that we left in place uh, the infrastructure right. that would support uh, the next campaign and, uh, and the people. So uh, it was a very successful period. And, you know, I'd have to also say it was a a time when the economy was doing well and the stock market was doing well and so we were, uh, our, our timing was probably Perfect. good in retrospect. And it was helpful because Murray Blackweller had worked with Martin before and he came yeah. on board yeah. and was familiar with... That, that's uh, true. Murray, well, one of the reasons we hired Martin was that he had a proven track record at private fundraising at Iowa State. Uh, one of the reasons he had a proven and successful track record was Murray Blackwelder uh, was his, uh, you know, head fund, uh, sure. fundraiser. And so, uh, you know, shortly after uh, Martin came, uh, uh, he expressed an interest in trying to recruit Murray to help him again. And, of course, they had worked together. And, again, it was a proven record. You know, that he had done it. And so we were fortunate enough to uh, bring Murray uh, to, to West Lafayette and, he did a great job uh, working with Martin. Uh, they were a great team. Sure. And, uh, but I think it also it became part of the culture uh, within the university in that, uh, for example, every dean uh, began to see that one of the important roles of his job was fundraising, mm -hmm. private fundraising. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully <clears throat> what we've left behind is a culture here where it's not just the president or the head of development, but it's everybody uh, who has a, a role at Purdue and a need at Purdue for uh, resources uh, sees it as part of their job to at least educate people on what they're doing and why Purdue right. needs support and uh, help in, in, in fundraising. Right, and that goes back to that consensus building. You get the consensus in there. And that well, that's, goes it, right in there. That's right. You need, you know, this is a big institution, right. uh, multi-dimensional, uh, uh, you know, several regional campuses, uh, 
uh, and it has a lot of roles, uh, both teaching students uh, in research at cutting edge. We've just toured this morning some of our new research buildings in Discovery Park, which is another great sure. uh, legacy of those years. Um, and in, in engagement with the state and other constituencies, you know, and taking our, uh, our experiences here in educating the world and improving the world. Uh, you know, bringing that all together under one roof uh, is a, a challenge, but it's a, it's, so it's you, rewarding and it's a challenge and it's ongoing. You're always working on it. You yeah, it, 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 it never, you're, you're never, quote, successful. There is no finished. Yeah, <laughs> right. it's a venture. <laughs> right. Uh, we talked about the strategic plan, of course, had, and then anything, other highlights, any special stars in the, in, when you were on the board that you want to make a comment well, on? Well, you know, I, I'd uh, revisit the comment about Discovery Park. Okay, um, good. Uh, was that, when we, uh, I asked, excuse me, I asked Dr. Jeske, I have interviewed him, where he said, I came up with that name. I, uh, he did. It, it was which really was, his... Um, which, uh, is, which was great. I was glad to get that answer because people say, where did it where come, it come from? from? Right. It was his concept, and uh, th there's such a move to interdisciplinary uh, right. research, so the old uh, silos uh, didn't quite fit, so you needed uh, an expression of that. Uh, Discovery Park is the ultimate expression right. uh, of that. You needed a place that would attract the kind of qualified faculty we wanted, whether that were, was senior people who already uh, were well known in their field or the bright young rising stars, uh, Discovery Park served that purpose as well as, you know, graduate students and students. Mm -hmm. But when I think back at one time, um, that was all very much out of date student housing. Uh, that part of the campus was one you hardly ever visited. and you. You move forward to today where we have all of these research buildings and several others under construction, other commitments coming. Um, it, it's just exciting to have been it a part of that. Very vibrant. Uh, you know, the creation of, of that uh, part of the campus. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. Um, now we'll talk about giving back, and that's, Dr. Yeah. Again, that's very nice. You've given quite a bit for the scholarships and particularly for that, that current with the Access and Success campaign all sort of rolls in. We make a comment on that, giving back, which is very nice. Well, appreciate I appreciate that. Um, you know, my wife and I uh, feel strongly that uh, uh, Purdue has uh, played a huge role in both our lives uh, and is a, a major reason why we've been successful in a, a variety of fronts. And so it only, and I came here uh, on a basketball scholarship. Uh, so my way was paid by others, and uh, it, it came to the point where we wanted to help, and, and you know, how do you help? Do you uh, give uh, money to a building or to um, research or to a faculty uh, appointment? And for us, uh, giving it to students uh, made the most sense, and it was the most rewarding. So uh, we have made a, a significant uh, commitment there, and, uh, and, and ha we're happy to do it. But I, I just have to add, uh, we're just one of an army of contributors uh, out there. Uh, I spent quite a bit of time with Martin during the fundraising campaign talking to donors and, you know, how generous they were. And uh, it, it's just uh, uh, very rewarding to engage with a potential donor and see their appreciation for Purdue, their gratitude, their love of the place, and their willingness to right. Uh, stand up and him. write a check and, and help out in whatever aspect of the university sure. they want. So uh, we've been fortunate to uh, be in a position where we could do it, and we did, but uh, there, there's so many uh, like us that uh, they're legion out there. It's very nice, and I think your comment, education is the one sure investment we can make for our future. I think that's a wonderful quote. That's well, very, I truly is. believe that. It really is, certainly in uh, I think earlier it, times as well as today. Correct. And, and you know, it, it's, it's not only the answer for America, it's probably the answer for the world. Uh, you know, there's so many, if you end up with an educated citizenry, uh, the chances are you'll be able to deal with whatever problems right. the citizens face. Right. And if they're uneducated, you, you don't have much uh, hope, right. in my view, of solving the problems. And uh, uh, education uh, just uh, it not only uh, creates a way to, to make a living, but to make a life right. and be a good uh, citizen of your whatever right. country, your state, your city, uh, your religion, whatever. Um, 
it, it, it builds character, it, it builds Enhances your intellectual the quality capacity. Of others' lives and your life as well. Uh, no question about it. Right. Um, now, awards and honors. The J. Timothy McGinley Plaza in Discovery Park. Yeah. Very nice. Tell me, how did, did do you know about it in a little advance? Well, I. I, I uh, usually ask that question when people get Sagamores. I say, well, I, I really was surprised. Yeah. <laughs> well, That's I nice. uh, did not know about it well in advance, but uh, apparently the board had been talking about doing something in. in uh, uh, President Cordova uh, was deeply involved in it, and uh, I, I really think uh, there may have been her idea that uh, whatever, because uh, she was uh, searching for things uh, to maybe uh, do, and uh, she was the first one who mentioned it to me, uh, and uh, uh, we're very grateful uh, for the honor. It it is. Uh, place uh, on it's campus that nice. I connect with. I mean, it's Discovery Park. We've talked about that. Mm -hmm. But as a, there's a fountain in the plaza, and surrounding that are various buildings. And all those buildings, each one of them is named for a good friend because uh, of these donors that we've mentioned, whether it's Mike Burke or Bill Binley or Jerry Mann right. uh, and, and others. Uh, Part, so, of your, part of the family. Yeah, it's just, it, it, and the plaza connects to all of them. So uh, we're, we're very thankful, very grateful, and, it, it, and appreciate it uh, deeply. And, uh, uh, you know, it's nice to have that it sure is. done. Yeah. And the other congratulatory I want to do in your honorary doctorate you just yeah. received. That's very nice. Yeah, it, it was, uh, that was a surprise, and um, you know, as the certificate says, it was the highest honor a university can bestow, and, and I'm wearing the uh, lapel pin that only those who receive an honorary doctorate uh, have, <laughs> um, and it was, it was kind of a nice capstone to my involvement over a long time uh, at Purdue, and I'm very grateful to the School of Engineering uh, for uh, uh, that's initiating true. this uh, because I'm not a traditional engineering student. I mean, I have my degree in chemical engineering, but I went off to uh, a graduate school and got a master's in business, and most of my career has been spent uh, in real estate investments. Um, so it's not a direct tie to what traditionalists would say, chemical engineering, but as we discussed over there, and as I think they fully uh, understand and promote is the, the training there prepares you for anything in life, whether that's uh, engineering per se or administration or uh, become a lawyer or whatever. And so I'm, I'm really grateful for them to recognizing that concept and, and raising me up as an example right. uh, of one who, uh, who they're proud of. And, and I'm certainly proud of my uh, chemical engineering nice. background. Congratulations, it's very nice. Thank you. Um, legacy, now one thing that, uh, when I retire, this is something I had read and I think we mentioned the last time, I hope service to Purdue will have bettered the university. If people can truthfully say that about my time at Purdue, then it will have been worthwhile. I think that's very yeah. nice. So I'm gonna Thank leave you. it with you what you'd like to, Well, I, I think something uh, I may have forgotten to ask or I'll leave it up to you. I'd go back probably to our uh, presidential search uh, in uh, 1999, we were as I mentioned, developing criteria sure. to go out and uh, uh, market ourselves and market to individuals who might be candidates. And we thought we needed an overriding theme uh, to all of that. And uh, we came up with uh, taking Purdue to the next level. Uh, we thought that kind of set it all and, and you can uh, uh, use that as a theme and pretty much look at any individual department or area and, and say, yeah, let's raise it to the next level. So I, I think the real uh, test for me would be, uh, can I honestly say uh, that during you know, my period as uh, board chair that, that we raised Purdue to the next level? And uh, I'll selfishly say that I think we did. Uh, and, uh, uh, and I emphasize the we because it's, uh, it's everybody. It's the board, it's the president, it's uh, faculty, staff, uh, community support, et cetera. But I, I honestly believe that uh, Purdue's a better place uh, today than it was when we all uh, started. And uh, I think Purdue's at the next level. And that right. kind of 
gives me great satisfaction. It certainly does, and we keep it, and you're going to keep in touch always. Oh sure, <laughs> I'm still I'm up here today. I was at dinner last night. I met with the president uh, for lunch, uh, so I'll stay involved in, in an advisory role, or frankly, whatever role Purdue would reach out and say, "Would you help do right. A, B, or C?" Uh, I, I'd quickly respond positively. We need continuing resources. Everybody does that in their that's lives. That's right. right. Exactly. It's, that's correct. <laughs> All right, Mr. McGinley, I want to thank you very much for this opportunity for us to get together again, and I thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much for my, my doing pleasure. this. Appreciate it. <laughs>